What is up, guys, and welcome to the Beyond Sanas channel. My name is Shanks, and today, once again, on the epic map Forts of Eisen in Battle for Middle of One, but this time on the patch 1.06, we have the green Gonzo player SG Teal, and he's fighting and facing against the orange Rohan player XNXX. So basically, Rohan, I mean, King Theodin was super upset because of Westfold, and now he decides to master the Rohirrim and attack the White City Gondor. Let's see if he got what it takes. We have double farm start from the Rohan player, and he's gonna use those farms, uh, I mean, those peasants actually kind of defensively. Normally in this matchup, you see most of the time Rohan pushing forward in order to deal economical damage, because Rohan early on has a huge advantage, since you can use those farms at the very same time also like a barracks. You can recruit many, many additional units, and that can actually give you such a crazy advantage at the beginning of the game. On the other side, Gondor is also kind of playing defensively, because once again, normally Gondor is forced to defend himself at the beginning, but there is a mind game, right? Basically, Rohan doesn't have to attack. You can also go for a creeping action, and the green Gondor player is using his hobbit Peregrine Tuk, also known as a full of a Tuk, <laughs> to actually scout this area to see what is going on, what is happening. This way he has some great vision control. Now he realizing, okay, I don't see any peasants. I'm actually also curious, where are the peasants at? They are hiding at the bottom left corner. I mean, did he actually not even pick draft? Oh my goodness, that's very interesting. Like, this guy is playing something else. Like, I've never seen this before, by the way. He's creeping with the Hobbit Meriadoc Brandybok. He didn't pick up the draft. He doesn't recruit any additional peasants. And it looks like he want to go straight into a very early stable, into the Rohirrim. During all this time, the Gondor player is going to creep. With the two soldiers, he has to use heal for that eventually. If he doesn't want to too much, if he doesn't want to lose too much HP. And I believe that's a good start. He's also creeping or trying to creep at least at the bottom right side. But the Variks are saying stay away from our homeland. And this Hobbit slowly but surely taking care of this. He will be able to get the money at least. And he should be good to go. I mean, I don't know man, I've never seen this one. I've been playing Give Me many many years and that's the first time I see this kind of strategy. The very first Rohirrim is already on the battlefield, while the stable from the Gondor player is still building up. You gotta keep in mind that Rohan early on has a huge advantage over Gondor. The reason is, um, you don't have to build blacksmiths, right? Blacksmiths is a thing for the Gondor faction. And on the other side, your stable is cheaper, and also your Rohirrim are cheaper. Look at that, 600 for the Gondor Knights, and only 480 for the Rohirrim. 600 even though this Gondor had like 3 farms outside. Uh, Rohirrim, they will be used to defend this. The Hobbit is coming from the Gondor player to actually hurt those Rohirrim. Rohirrim are having like a uh, bad armor against heroes. That's why Rohi uh, you know, Hobbits like Peregrine Took and also Meriadoc Brandybuck are actually quite effective when it comes to deal damage to the Rohirrim from the Rohan faction. During all this time, the Hobbit here, Meriadoc Brandybuck, is actually level 4 already. He was able to creep this completely by himself. And don't underestimate the Hobbits, guys. Trust me on that one. The Hobbits are actually, when they get some levels on them, they will be able to hit like a truck. So, early on, it's going to be about map control. And, again, I'm very surprised, but also at the same time kind of impressed to see something else, even in 2022. That's kind of impressive. Right, but the thing is, those Rohirrim are badly damaged. They cannot fight uh, this. He's going to use heal, but the heal is not going to change too much, or will it? No, I don't think so. Or, 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 the Gondor player, hey, 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 oh, no, 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 that's painful. Like, there is a huge differential between BFME 1 and BFME 2, and one of the major differences is, if you lose a Gondor Knight early on, it will be pretty bad for you, you know what I'm saying? It will be really, really bad for you, and the Gondor player is gonna creep this one, and now he has to replace the Gondor Knight, right? He needs to go for another one, that's gonna slow him down a lot. Like, the money could have been invested into more blacksmiths or into the Forge Blitz. But he cannot afford that as we are talking. During all this time, the Rohan player was even demolishing his armory, uh, his stable. What am I watching? <laughs> what is this guy planning to do? Is he gonna go for the end mood? I mean, he could, but fighting for the map control with two Rohirrim only, um, that's gonna be a tough one. We have still a couple of creeps left on the map. The Vort layer at the bottom right and also at the bottom left. The peasants are chilling and celebrating and cheering. Yeah, we don't have to fight today. Today, the Rohirrim are gonna fight for us. And uh, yeah, the Hobbit, once again, is doing a phenomenal job. He's gonna be able to get cloaked, and maybe he can use the Hobbit to steal the money from the creep. That would be actually awesome for the Rohan player XNXX. That's a bad thing to leave the Hobbit to get, to get the last hit, because you wanna get your Gondor Knights as highly leveled as you 
possibly can. Very important because more levels mean more DPS. Talking about more DPS, we have now Forge Blades on the Skonerites. It means they should be every single time able to win those skirmishes against Rohan, Yonets, Rohirrim. He is now finally able to build full base. And we have in total one, two, three, four blacksmiths only. That's not what you want to have. That's going to make your upgrades actually quite expensive. You need to invest 480. If you have six blacksmiths instead, you will only have to pay 360. I mean, 120 doesn't sound a lot. But you got to keep in mind that this counts on the blades, on the, on the heavy armor, and also on the banner, as well as on the shields. You can make them all cheaper if you have the full bonus of the steel bonus from the blacksmiths of the Gondor faction. Oh my goodness, what? This guy is actually rushing Legolas. Okay, I mean, I take it, dude. I like it. I mean, Legolas is definitely something we don't see every uh, single game. It's pretty rare to see... To be honest, the, you know, Prince of the Mirkwood Elves. And the thing is, Gondor can actually get a huge advantage against them by just buying the Night Shields. The Night Shields is going to increase, increase your Pierce armor by 75%, which means you would take literally 75% less damage from arrows. So this Legolas will have a hard time not only to level up, to get stronger and better, but also to survive. Because Knights with Blades, they will hit like a truck. Two power points in the bank for the Rohan player, two and a half for the Gondor player. You might even be able to save for Gandalf at this point. But if you want to be able to actively fight for the map control and not always run away the second you see Legolas on your field, I would, you know, I would personally buy upgrades like heavy armor and also um, shields. Yes, heavy armor purchase already on these Gondor Knights. That's gonna make them quite beefy, and there is no world in which the Rohirrim can contest them now at this point. Rohan is losing map control, which means less money. Keep in mind that Rohan is the one faction in Battle for Middle of One with the least spots in the castle. So we have only seven. Isengard and Mordor have eight. And Gondor has nine. And Legolas is trying to get in safety. Losing him now would be extremely painful. There is a gentleman's agreement. And that is actually not to gate rush. So if this Gondor player would just go inside the jeans now, the game would be legit over. But again, it's not like a it's like a golden rule kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? It's not like set in the stone, but. It is like a gentleman's agreement. Even though in evil factions that's not the case, but in, when it comes to fight against Go, you know, Gondor or Rohan, in like friendly matches, you don't gate rush. You know, that's the one thing. You don't wanna, you don't get any friends doing that. You will be ending up like, uh, you know, Gollum. You will be like, you have no friends, nobody likes you. Uh, 200 command points and 3000 in the bank of the Gondor player. He needs 3000 more for the, for the Gandalf. And he has the power points already. Uh, hold on a second, yeah, that's Gandalf, or Gondor. And look at the minimap, like, he has almost 100% map control, and the Rohirrim, they can always only run away the second they see the Gondonites, they have no chance. He's now building the armory for the heavy armor and forge plates next, you will also need Theorin. Um, for now, he has only Legolas, Legolas level is only level 2, and yeah, he wasn't actually a great investment, in my opinion. When it comes to fight as Rohan against Gondor, you don't want to let Gondor get into a very super late game. Because when it when there is one thing Rohan is not very good at, is the siege power. The ends, yes, they are outranging the trebuchet. They are also outranging every other unit siege weapon in the game. But they are also extremely vulnerable against magic damage from Gandalf. And also uh, trebuchet. The Firestone upgrades are gonna roast those ends alive. I mean, great map control. Gondor is growing rich. Look his money. His money income per minute is kind of insane at this point. He will be very soon able to recruit the wizard. And that's not going to make it easier for the Rohan player. Because Easter Light from Gandalf chunks. Like, it hits extremely hard. It's almost enough to one-shot Legolas from 100 to 0. I mean, not 100%. It will deal like 95% damage. And all you need is like one or two hits from the Gondonites. And Legolas is going to be gone. Or Rohan will be forced to use heal. Now he needs to re you know, rebuild the stable after getting, getting all the upgrades on his Rohirrim. The Gondonites, they have also a couple of levels on them. And we will very soon see Gandalf joining the battlefield as Gandalf the White. I mean, this game is definitely not looking good for Rohan. Um, and at this point, what Gondor has to do is 
Play it smart and slow. You don't have to rush anything. You have a huge advantage. Most of the time I see players doing a mistake. Like they want to finish off the game very quickly, which kind of leads them into making mistakes over mistakes and over mistakes. And that's the only possible way Rohan player can turn this game around. He needs to rely on the mistakes Gondor player might make. If Gondor plays a smooth game, decent game, there is no world and no chance for Rohan to turn this game around. Lightning Sword will be hitting actually the Rohirrim. Oh, that's painful. Only one of them was able to survive. And Easter Light might be able to finish him off. Don't run into the wizard. Don't run into the wizard. Easter Light him. That's a lot of money Rohan player will be losing if Gandalf chooses to Easter Light him. And yes, sir. There comes the Easter Light. You gotta use heal. Nah, it's too late. And the full battalion has been taken down. We have now King of Rohan, Theodin King, on the field to lead the Rohirrim army to victory. That's his mass, you know, mission. That's his task. We get to see more and more Rohirrim in the meantime. But look at the minimap, boys. That's really worrying me. The current status of this game between Gondor and Rohan. Maybe it was not a great idea after all from King Theorin to actually declare war to Gondor. Now, at this point, build trebuchet. But you need to also protect them, you know. Build archer range or barracks for the tower guards. Very important. Get outposts under your control. Just snowball your lead slowly but surely into a very decent and quick victory. This Rohan is present. He cannot leave his castle. And the one mistake you can make is by recruiting only trebuchet. Because when you send them out forward, even when Gandalf is around, there is not enough protection for them. And they are extremely expensive. You know? That's why you gotta make sure... Um, to protect them with something like they can shoot Faramir, Boromir can be a great choice Tower Guards can be a great choice Rangers can be a great choice and also Marketplace you know, when you have this much map control as Gondor you have so much money, build the Marketplace get Grand Harvest, grow rich and never be worried about your resource income anymore they got us a shooting from a safe distance, he's level 4 now he will hurt, definitely I mean, you should never underestimate the DPS of the Elven Hero, he is definitely chunking you quite a lot and yeah, I mean, Rohan is desperately trying to fight for the map control, but his Rohirrim at this point of the game are no match against fully upgraded Gondonites with shields, heavy armor, and forge blades. He is now camping in front of the Rohan castle, and Rohan is not living the American dream. He's having the American nightmare. <laughs> Dude, he's getting actually bullied hardcore. What is happening? We need to, at this point, you need to get fire arrows. And you need to recruit Rohirrim archers. I know it's, you know, uh, you know, it's like a dream world in which you can do that. But it looks like you want to save up for Aragorn. Okay, he's going for the Anduril Sword. And for that reason, he was forced to pick the draft. When you have no draft, you can't go for the Anduril Sword. That's required. And Aragorn with Anduril Sword and Blade Master will become easily in one single second to a one-man army. And not even Gandalf, the most expensive hero in the game, can hurt him. Now, don't tell me in the comment section down below, Shanks, uh, Gandalf is not the most expensive hero Witch King is. You are wrong. Witch King doesn't require you to pick two power points from your spell book to make him actually actively effective. Gandalf costs 6,000, which is, let's be honest, much, much harder for Gondor to collect than 8,000 for Mordor. Evil factions have generally much more, much better resource income. They have like money boosting abilities like Devastation, Scavenger, Industry, and Gondor doesn't have any of these. Boom. Oh, look at this DPS, boys. Theorin King gets chunked and he's forced to go back to the castle. But, ladies and gentlemen, who can stop the wizard if not the heir of Gondor, the son of Aratorn, the Isildur's heir? He will restore hope for men or for Rohan in this case. I mean, it's kind of ironic. I know that, you know, Aragorn is actually fighting for Rohan and not for Gondor because of the lore he is the king of gondor after all but it would kind of make sense in terms of the game balance because if you put aragorn and gandalf in one single faction gg well played you have no chance anymore you know what i'm saying like these are the two most powerful heroes in the game legolas is shooting lightning sword is going to be casted but the damage is going to be split between rohirrim theodin and elma uh, not elma legolas is going to shoot you boom and he's hitting chunks from aragorn aragorn is actually hitting like a truck and gandalf is barely barely able to get away does he have actually heal no heal was even on cooldown and that's the power of the rohan heroes boys don't underestimate them you cannot stand still and cast a spell for like five to ten seconds that's literally not possible you will get slaughtered by the heir of Gondor, Aragorn is hunting. He's hunting wizards. 
I mean, in the films he was saying, let's hunt some orcs, but in the game, he's hunting some wizard who is now running for his life. Gandalf Mifrandia doesn't stand a chance. And Legolas is level 5. Every single level means more DPS. And the second he unlocks the level 7 arrow wind, and if he is able to manage to hit this on Gandalf exclusively, he will be bursted down even to heal. There is nothing. That's the most, I mean, one of the most powerful single target abilities in the entire game. Against, against heroes, it's even better than the lightning sword from Gandalf. I mean, uh, Lightning Sword is overall better, of course, because it also dam damages, like, I don't know, like, buildings, for example. And Arrowwind is very good against units and heroes. Alright, so we have four Trebuchet. And we have Fire Upgrade Purchase for Gondor Archers. But he has no protection for them. You should definitely, definitely recruit some Tower Guards. That's very important. Now it's a tough <laughs> situation for Gondor. Even though it doesn't look like that on the minimap, I know. But hear me out. The amount of DPS from Aragorn is the one thing. The other thing is his insane tankiness. Like, this guy is like a living tank. You know what I'm saying? He can just tank all these arrows for ages. That's why you need Faramir. That's why you need also Boromir. Boromir actually is extremely important because Boromir's passive will knock down enemy heroes and units on the ground. And that's the maybe that's the only possible way for you to be able to stop Aragorn. You need to disable him. Ar you know, Boromir doesn't deal too much damage to Aragorn, but he's able to disable him, crowd control him. He cannot move. Then you have your Gondor Knights with Aragorn, with, I mean, with Gandalf and Faramir, and eventually Trebuchet hitting like a truck on the Aragorn as well. Yeah, we shall see. You will see now. You have Theorin level. is level almost three. Oh, that's going to become even more dangerous when this guy gets level four. The Glorious Charge is going to make those Rohirrim almost immune to damage. In Faramir, look at this, guys. This, you know, this man is looking like a man who is just here to show his quality. Warning Arrow is also pretty effective against heroes like Theorin and also Legolas. So Warning Arrow and Easter Egg combination is enough to one-shot Theorin easily to even one-shot Legolas, but not Aragorn. Aragorn is an exception to the rule. And Legolas is shooting. His DPS is pretty nice because, you know, these are level 6 Gondor Knights with shields. But they don't have leadership yet. When Gandalf is around, they have also 50% more increased armor, which makes them even tankier. So now the siege is gonna begin. begin. We have almost still full map control. There is only one single farm for the Rohan player. And he needs to win this fight. That's like, if he wins this fight, he has actually the chance to turn this game around. Now the one-man army is gonna move on, but you should not overestimate him. I mean, you can, with Blademaster, Attilas, and heal from the spellbook being available, you can actually make some, some, some stuff happen. And there comes the Aragorn boys. He's gonna face tank Warning Arrow. He's gonna face tank like a boss, the fully charged. Dude. He's fully charged. He's tanking the fully charged Lightning Sword on his face. And boom, he's back to full HP. Theorian King has been slain though. Faramir is shooting, but what can Faramir do against such a reckless hit? Now is the time for Faramir to not show his quality anymore. Aragorn is like, Faramir, get out of my way. Look this, look this, look this, look this. He's chunking him. And Gandalf is once again forced to disengage, and that's minus four, five thousand resources gone, just like that, to the one man army Aragorn. That's unbelievable. Unbelievable. There is no world. You need to get Boromir recruited. You need more DPS. You need to burst this guy down or disengage before losing everything you have on the field. Let's calculate. Every single trebuchet costs you at bare minimum 700, right? Depends on how many blacksmiths you have. He has in total five. That means he needs to invest over 300 for each Firestone upgrade on the trebuchet. Let's actually 350. That means every single one of these is worth more than 1000. Oh, but Aragor, Gandalf. Gandalf actually chunked Legolas. Okay, Gandalf actually doing a phenomenal work. The only hero you need to avoid, you need to avoid fighting is Aragorn. But he was also able to break one part of the wall. Maybe going for a more, you know, maybe going for more trebuchet is not even required. I don't know why he's never buying the upgrade, uh, the outposts. You know, buy the outposts, build some farms, get even greater eco, marketplace. You need to make something happen when you are rich, not when you are poor. Then it's too late. Okay, so level 7 Ganov. Level 10, obviously, unlocks the mighty War of Power, which can crush the enemy units. Uh, but Rohan play is forced to revive his King Theorin. And also, Legolas has to be revived, which is easier said than done, because the money from Rohan is not looking great. He can't even buy the fire. He did. Okay. 
So if you don't need elves or you don't need yeoman archers, but you need a Rohirrim archers. And if you don't know, they are working. Oh, look, there comes Aragorn. Hey, hey, hey. Kind of run for your life. If you see him red and blue at the same time, you don't want to see these two colors mixed. Trust me, no one. Gondor is running for his life. Turn and visa blast them. Visa blast them. That's a perfect opportunity. Just blast them. Dude, you will get so much experience, but looks like he doesn't want to do that. Aragorn is still on the hunt. You need when you want to deal damage to Aragorn, you need to wait until the Blade Master duration is finished. Oh, okay. I mean, he has still ranking here, by the way. I mean, he has armor and damage leadership. That's why this Gondor Knights they cannot fight. Does Gondor have land? Yes, sir. So he has land and the Elven Allies. But the Elven Allies at this stage of the game is not gonna do much. I would have gone for the for the Rohirrim instead. And with the Rohirrim, hold on. Hold on, hold on. This guy is chunking. With throw him, you can actually abuse the fact that he has one broken part of the wall and send them inside. And because they are from the summon, it doesn't even hurt you that much if you lose them. Um, and I believe there would be overall a much greater choice of a power point from the Gondor spellbook instead of going for the Elven Allies, which can get trampled down instantly from the Rohirrim. I know they are immune to be trampled when they are using the swords, but when they are using the swords, they also don't deal damage, so... And the problem is, this theory, boys, is almost level 4. That means, for death and glory moment might eventually happen very soon, and you don't want it to happen. So Gondor is pressuring the wall, but it's okay, as long as you not go inside the jeans, as long as you not go inside the castle and deal economical, heavily economical damage, Rohan is absolutely fine. And we have now Legolas almost back on the menu. He's level 5, by the way. Crazy DPS. Gondor keeps fighting for the map control, but refuses to purchase those outposts left and right. Aragorn is going to be sent forward. He was waiting for the Blade Master duration to be ready. Yes, also, I believe, heal from the Spellbook. Yes, sir. Heal from the Spellbook. Atelas means double recovery, double sustain. And there is nothing Gondor can do about that. If he wants to take down the Trebuchet, he will. He will, my precious. He will. Small fight here between Gondorites. I don't know about that. Rohirrim are now diving in with King Theorin. And yeah, all you gotta do, all you can do is run for your life. One shot in Trebuchet, just like that. Unbelievable DPS. Unbelievable burst. I mean, what can Gandalf do against such... Oh boy, the level up animation and you know what time it is. Right out, me, right out with me. Right out and meet them. For the and glory. No, for Rohan. For your people. Oh my goodness, boys. You know what it means. And the thing is, Gandalf is very powerful, yes. But the Glorious Charge is going to make those Rohirrim so extremely tanky and beefy that his Visa Plus is not going to be able to deal any damage, only knock them down on the ground. Like, um, trust me, in long terms, Rohan can completely shut down Gandalf. Legolas highly leveled Rohirrim matches with Glorious Charge and Aragorn leadership, Theorin leadership. Gandalf cannot even come anywhere close to them. That's why you need to find a transition before it's too late. Now it might be already too late. Like, he's finally recruiting, recruiting some rangers, but I think they are just too late. Aragorn is now level 7. Degoras is level 6. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, you gotta, you gotta heal him eventually. Heal has been used on Legolas. He's shooting Gandalf all the time. Does he have heal from the Spearwalk? Yes. Uh, he's gonna use... That actually chunks him still. Oh! Oh my goodness. Hey, hey, hey. Shoot him, he's like 1 HP. Visa Plus, boom, sun on your face. And Aragondo, Aragondo, Aragondo getting it away. And there comes the Glorious Charge. For Defend Glory, the Alvin Alliance, once again, they couldn't do anything. And if Gondor would be able to take down this Aragon, who was basically only 1 HP, this game would be already over by now. But Aragorn, as he's the main character of the film, of course, is not going to die that easily. There comes Gandalf, almost level 8. More DPS, when he's level 8, more damage with the spells. And also more tankiness. I mean, you can not be tanky enough to fight and face against Aragorn, smashing you with his sword in medium range. There is nothing in the game, including Balrog, that is that tanky. Now we have combos. And this ranger-soldier combination. You need tower guards, though. You need tower guards. I mean, we see these guys have the glorious charge. The problem is the man of the West plays command points kept. Luckily, in the patch 2.22, which you should also play, be playing by now, you have more command points available for good and evil factions just for more epic fight. Because the thing is that 200 command points is just not enough. Oh, is there light? But Blade Master. And look at this, boys. Chunk, chunk, chunk. And he's hitting like an absolute track. Now we have Rohirrim archers. And once again, Legolas can also level them up, by the way, with three archers. They are working like an archer battalion. That means three archers is also going to work on the Rohirrim archers to, again, more levels, more DPS. The level scaling in BFME 1 is crazy. 
Like there is a huge differential between the level one unit and level four unit. One level four unit, for example, can fight alone against two level one units easily. The amount of stats boost from a level one to level two all alone is also insane. Okay, so we have 12 statue range inside. Farami not even getting revived. Nobody cares about my boy Farami, not even his daddy. He's gonna feed those soldiers because he needs command points, and that's a bad thing. Luckily, on the patch 2.22, you don't have to do that because you can just sell them inside your citadel. I mean, there are so many reasons, guys, why you should be playing on the patch 2.22 over the 1.06. And one video all alone is not going to be enough to explain you guys the reasons. Is there light? Nice one. And you should just aim this on the Rohirrim, guys, at this point. You know, it's important to get levels on Gandalf. Using it on Aragorn when you are not 100% certain that you can finish him off with your Gondor Knights is just going to be a waste of your spell. And you need to wait. It has like a long cooldown, right? That's why it's better if you actually target Rohirrim or weak heroes like Legolas or Theorin, which you can make sure, okay, I can take them down. Aragorn is just going to be like an incredible tank in the front line who is extremely hard to fight against. Now we have in total uh, five power points collected for the Rohan player. He has also a lot of army on the field. I mean, three Yoman archers are kind of wasting the command points, but that's fine. Five power points collected, six is going to unlock his end ally summon. And with the ends, he might actually go for a sneaky uh, base rush. So basically, you can go here, summon the ends, break one part of the wall, and go with the glorious charge inside the castle. With this many Rohirrim and Aragorn and Theorin, you can finish off the castle of Gondor in literally no, no time. And you can also save up for a 7 power points instead. Oh, he's going to miss the lightning sword. Um, lightning sword, if you cancel it, it's going to go on cooldown instantly. And there is a reason for that. The reason is because it's so incredibly strong. That if you if it wouldn't go on cooldown, the matchup between Gondor and Mordor would be literally impossible. There comes the glorious charge. Shooting. Aragorn is face tanking this time. But he has, he's tanking this unit. And he's also tanking the trebuchet. The trebuchet have friendly fire. We have uh, porcupine formation with the Gondor Knights. He's actually shooting his own Gondor Knights as well. Trebuchet, they are... You know, they can also hurt you a lot. You gotta, you gotta take down this Theorin. That's very important. Aim for the Theorin with the ranges inside the outpost. That's very important too. Elven Allies will be summoned for the second time. Aragorn is being hunted down. Aragorn is still good. He is full HP, bro. Are you even trying? That's the thing. Uh, Lightning Sword? No, he has no abilities available for Gandalf. Gandalf has to be careful. Rohirrim Archers and Legolas are actually chasing him down. And he's getting chunk, 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 chunk and killed. Just like that, Legolas is saying, where are you trying to go, Wizard? And what a dominance. What a great fight this was for the Rohan player. He is able to not only win the fight, kill all the trebuchet, kill all the combos, but also finish off Gandalf. That's a huge achievement. But, you know, it was a really bad spot. Positioning with the statue in the in the on the left side, you want to always build it in the bed, in the behind. And don't target Aragon. You can manually target. Target. Look, Aragon's damage, dude. That's crazy, my man. Like level eight. Legolas is also level eight. Erowyn is available, and Gandalf, even though he's so powerful and strong, Gondor has so much money, but he doesn't know what he's supposed to do. That's the problem. I mean, he was feeding Theoden a lot. He was feeding also Aragon a lot. Legolas a lot. Now fighting and going army against army is gonna be kind of almost impossible. Okay, I mean, taking down the well is good. That's gonna... Oh, but don't lose your level 7 Gondor Knights for that. Don't lose Lord... Lord oh, that's that's not a good trade. That's not a good trade. Losing those highly leveled Gondor Knights, that's painful. I'm not sure why the Gondor player actually refuses to recruit Boromir. That doesn't make any sense to me. The outpost has been fully taken down. The stable is gonna be rebuilt now because he was losing a lot of the Gondor Knights. Gandalf has to be revived as well. Farami is finally being revived. But again, this guy is unlike Denethor. A huge fan of Faramir and, you know, not a fan of Poromir, apparently. You need tower guards, you need more ranges, and you also need more tower guards. But everything is easier said than done, because on the patch 1.06, every unit costs you so many extra command points. Like, you have only 200. You need to recruit Trebuchet, you need to recruit Ranger, they cost 20 each. Tower guards, they cost 15 each. Gondor Knights, they cost 20 each. Gandalf even costs power point, uh, command points in the patch 1.06. Trebuchet is ready. Legolas, level 8, shooting, and he can level up every single time, and more levels, more levels, more levels. Only the level 10 is the limit, and level 10 Rohirrim Archer Battalion, holy guacamole, guys, is going to destroy everything on his path. Gandalf can die to one single Rohirrim Archer level 10. Trust me on that one. Like, there is insane amount of damage. And that's one of the most interesting Rohan play styles I've act. Oh, Erowyn. 
actually they don't even die because they are so tanky but they are look at this range my dude like from downtown star wars and they oh he was forced to use heal now he is on cooldown for gandalf who is now back on his shadow effects and let me know guys in the comment section down below what do you guys think about this rohan gameplay i mean it's refreshing right it's something we have not seen a lot at least not on this channel normally i am not a big fan of rohan against gondor because the game either lasts 50 minutes or being you know ending like in 10 minutes if the rohan player chooses to go for the end trash but that's something i've not seen myself before so let me know if you guys like this gameplay from rohan you know going for the and uh, like interesting from the beginning of the game he was not going for the draft and not even going for the push oh the gunner knights what are they doing oh they are suiciding that's painful does he have ends now yes sir and not only does he have ends he's also only three power points away from his army of the dead offbreaker special summon an offbreaker special summon unlike unless gandalf is going to be able to hit level 10 before that is going to be the game winning move because then you can summon the eod kill the gate with the eod eod can kill the gate but only if the gate is closed for whatever reason we try to fix that that's not fixable <laughs> you cannot attack the gate if it's opened you know all right so theodine level four level five almost level six it's gonna unlock the king's fever so you can level up them with the king's fever and also with the train arches at the same time shoot this guy yeah he's shooting him now i think but it's too late it's too late oh level six death and glory boys oh gandalf did you guys see that there's like a magic trick to it like what can gandalf do against such a regular seed the answer is absolutely nothing this aragon is almost level 9 by the way level 10 aragon has also ability which means you can summon the off breakers nine power points i mean the thing is i believe what the gondor player has to do it might be too late for this though but what he had to do is avoid fighting this army all the time why would you go into this army just go into his base i mean you broke two parts of his wall and that's a choke point so basically you go inside the genes attack the buildings and if the rohirrim are coming to contest you and they have to then you can turn with gandalf that's a choke point they will be clamped here then you go for the visa blast that's what you need to do and that's what i mean he's doing it now but it, it's too late i mean rohan is now too much money like at this it's too late now all of a sudden you know because he can easily repair those walls there is no way but he doesn't want to invest that much money i'm assuming we're gonna see eventually and some soon but also rohan can play it kind of a bit slow because he has such a powerful army at this point as we are talking gondor can't do much the thing is that he has no boromir and um i i know you might like hey okay shanks you i got it boromir is needed i know what you mean I, I, maybe i'm annoying by saying boromir all the time but not only because of the knockdown also boromir is the only way gondor faction can have damaged leadership and what you need against aragorn is damaged leadership you will you need to burst him down fast enough that's the only possible way and Boromir provides 60% additional damage leadership to the nearby allied units. And that's the only way you can make increase the damage and DPS from your rangers. Make them hit a bit harder. And Aragorn can finally one time die in this game. Like Aragorn feels like an invincible Exodia. Thanos with six infinity stones. That's crazy. Oh boy, boys. Aragorn is on the hand. The Hobbit actually still here from Rohan, hiding <laughs> since the beginning of the game. He's level 4, Mary Adog, Brandybog. Didn't get killed one single time. And also, Elma could be a nice hero. I mean, Rohan has so much money at this point. Like, he has almost 8k. Maybe he's planning to get to the point in which he can destroy the castle and buy the castle. Because to buy the castle, you need 5,000. I would still repair this eventually. You know, you know, better safe than sorry. You can always cancel them just before they build up to get the full money back. Oh, train arches once again, King's Fever. Oh my goodness. Level 8 Rohirrim Archer. Level 10 Rohirrim Archer. Are you kidding me? Arrowwind. Pew, 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 pew. Heal is gonna be used. That's unbelievable, dude. This guy, when he... The thing is, you, you cast this. And if the target is in the circle, that while you are casting it, doesn't matter where the target is going. Like, Legolas can be here, and the Gondor Knights can be literally here. That doesn't matter. The Arrowwind is gonna follow them. It's like a missile, you know what I'm saying? Like a rocket. Okay, so Gondor can only camp, but for, for camping, you need to hope that Rohan has no army of the dead. I mean, maybe Gondor doesn't know that Rohan is going to have army of the dead special summon very soon, because he has not even seen the ends yet. While we are almost at army of the dead power spike for Rohan, the Gondor is not even at the point in which he can call on the eagles. 
that's how far ahead Rohan player is. After a very I must complete my task. Yeah, you can complete your task all you want, but it's too old, it's too late for this one. You know, again, it's too late. I know you will say Avizad is never late, nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means. I know that, but you are not right this time. Sorry. I mean, poor guy, poor guy, boys. Look at him, boys. He's looking so friendly too, but what can he do? Oh, King Theodin, guys. He's gonna take the revenge of Westworld. Like, I can understand. I can imagine now Theodin, you know, when it comes to finish of the game. Oh, Lightning Sword. He's gonna hit it. But look at them. Look at them, guys. Fully charged. Fully charged. Atelas back to full HP. And now Gandalf has to run. Now he's gonna turn and use Easter Light. It's the two most of the, you know, two of the most powerful uh, spells in the game. And Aragorn is moonwalking. He's like, can touch this. Okay. Oh, okay. Looks like. Uh, Gondor doesn't want to give Rohan the chance to use AOD and that's gonna be the game of the day guys thank you so much for watching I hope this was enjoyable for you if it was please don't forget to leave a like on this video subscribe for more content like this in the future I will see you next time until then keep hitting like a truck and as always stay beyond standards peace out